Did you know that on average, us humans spend 90% of our time indoors? And yet study after study show us that our exposure and connection to nature is a huge part of our mental, emotional, and physical well-being. So how do we take this spending all this time indoors and need for connection with nature and blend them together? Well, we do that with something called biophilic design, and I'm gonna talk about it right now. Hello everyone, Larissa here, and this video comes to you via Of Houses and Trees, where I blog about sustainable design, sustainable living, sustainable everything. In this video, what I want to talk about is the sustainable design aspect. The specific area of sustainable design that I want to talk about is biophilic design. Biophilic architecture and design is an offshoot of this concept called biophilia, so basically that is a love of nature. It actually directly translates to love of life. So that would be the love of all living things, not just ourselves and our fellow humans, but all of the animals and the plants and just everything else out in the natural world. Biophilic design is so much more than just bringing a bunch of plants into your house. It's really about approaching every aspect of design from the lens of the natural world. So because I primarily talk about the sort of interior space of a home, um, that's what I'm gonna focus on more in this video. Although in my last video, I did talk about green construction materials, not necessarily um, from a biophilic standpoint, but just a way to create a more sustainable home sort of from the ground up. But in this video, it's gonna be all about the things that we bring into our home. Biophilic design is about so much more than the aesthetics of our home, although it can certainly be a very aesthetically pleasing um, way of approaching uh, your design. But it's really about the fact that nature is part of our biology. And if you think about the things that we, basic needs that we um, have to survive, you know, we need clean water, we need fresh air, access to healthy sources of food. These are all things that you find out in nature. Studies that have been conducted recently have shown that people who spend more time exposed to nature, whether that be by actually spending time outside or by spending time inside, surrounded by things that remind them of nature or that come from the natural world, it actually can increase your productivity, it can help you to sleep better, it can help to um, improve your mental health. I think nature, at least for me, it proves that we are only a small part of something and when we are being constantly exposed to that sort of larger, bigger world out there, it helps us to, I think it helps us to put things into perspective and also helps us to maybe feel like there's a little bit of magic in life. I mean, my daughter before, I remember her telling me that she was really upset that magic wasn't real and she was like, but is magic real? And I was like, go outside and look around. Like if that's not magic, I don't know what is. And if you want more of a sort of scientific way of thinking about it, then nature is magic. Um, Oliver Heath, who is a very well-known biophilic designer, the way he defines it is an evidence-based and nature-based approach to creating healthier workplaces and homes. So I think it's really cool to think of biophilia and the four elements, which would be, of course, uh, water, air, earth, and fire. So if when you are creating an interior space and you wanna think about how you can make it have a nature-based approach, think about those four things. Air would be about um, letting in fresh air, so making sure that you have windows that can open, you have a good uh, ventilation system, that things aren't feeling you know, stuffy inside, which is why you know when people work or spend time in sick buildings, sick buildings actually make people sick because physically they're not a good place for them to be spending time in, but they're also emotionally and mentally not a good place for them to spend time in. For earth, uh, you could have things, of course, like plants with some nice soil in it, so like real plants, not the fake ones. You could have things like clay, application on your walls, natural stones and tiles, earthy colors. You could go so far for water as to insert a water um, feature, which I actually know somebody who has like a little miniature waterfall when you come into their home and know their home is not like a spectacular size. It's just something that they prioritize. Me personally, I wouldn't do that, but there are a lot of ways to bring the feeling of water into your home. If you think about water, you think about the colors of water, blues, greens, and then the movement of water. So um, furniture that maybe has a curve to it or artwork that features something to do with water. It doesn't have to be a picture of a lake or the ocean, or it could be, but it could also just be something 
that is more abstract and has that sort of feeling of water. Fire is a bit trickier unless you have a wood burning fireplace as we do, but fire is warmth. Fire is texture. Fire is like darker things like uh, terracotta and you know sort of deep reds and deep oranges and a feeling of coziness, right? We wanna feel safe and cozy in our home. And I think that's where the aspect of fire could be brought into it. Another really important aspect of biophilic design is natural light. So we talked about the four elements, um, but natural light you could say is like the fifth element. You're right, you're right, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. So you wanna make sure that you have windows that are not blocked by furniture or don't have heavy curtains covering them all the time. Of course, we wanna be able to sleep and block out light if we need to, but I like to suggest maybe mounting your curtains outside of the window so that they can be pulled all the way open. I'm really lucky to have lots of natural light in my home. Um, that's what's shining on me right now. Not everybody has a home like that. Sometimes there are smaller windows and that's okay as well. Just making sure that again, that you're utilizing whatever natural light you actually do have and then supplementing it with forms of lighting for when it gets darker or in the rooms that you don't have windows. Uh, you could have, you know, wall sconces, table lamps, floor lamps, overhead lighting. There's lots of ways to bring light into your home aside than just, you know, nice big windows. And so the last thing I want to touch on is that if you do a search of like biophilic architecture or biophilic interior design, quite often the examples that come up from, you know, like interior design websites, or architecture websites and magazines are really, really expensive beautiful, but not the kind of home that an average person would live in. But you don't have to have a home like that. I think that's the myth of sustainability. The myth is that you have to have all this money, um, that you have to have this like custom built home with all these like um, bells and whistles to make it more sustainable. Anybody can be more sustainable if you just keep sort of the basic principles um, that I talked about in mind. And so I just wanted to mention some sort of more budget friendly ways to do a biophilic design, of course, buying things secondhand and thrifted, always a great way to do it. You could maybe get some secondhand planters and if they are not um, a color that you really like, you could do, uh, you could paint them or you could do sort of like a clay applique on them, get some soil, get some plants. Although I know I said earlier, it's so much more than just buying a bunch of plants into your house. But plants are a good way to start. And then there also are ways that you could use what you already have. Um, that's always like number one. But you also could invest in more affordable things like artwork. I found a few pieces over on Etsy that were more affordable and then you're supporting, you know, kind of more local handmade uh, sort of people as opposed to going to like a big retail store or chain store and buying things that look nature inspired but probably were not made with the environment in mind nor made by people who were paid fair wages, which of course is not the way to go about making your home more friendly to all things that are living because humans are living too and people deserve to be paid fair wages for the work that they do. You also could invest in something that's maybe a little bit more expensive from a sustainable brand or from more of a conscious marketplace that lists a bunch of different brands. So there's like Made Trade and Viva Terra. And as far as furniture goes, you could check out places like the Citizenry, but you also could do things like, it's literally just a stump that's been sanded down and I think it looks beautiful. And if you have access to forest, go grab yourself a log and use that as decor. You could sand it, you could paint it, you could leave it as is. Wanna see one of my favorite pieces of decor? It's this. It's a log with some sort of like growth on it. And this is literally sitting in my living room and I love it. It was free, I found it outside and it makes me happy. So that's it for this video. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that you're inspired to make your home a little bit more um, nature focused. And if you're not really even sure how to do that, you can head on over to Houses and Trees. I have free design consultations, so you can ask me questions. I also have e-design, so I could help you pick out things that help your home to feel cozy and happy and healthy. So if you like this video, please subscribe and give it a little one of those. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Now I may have a little bit more of a kind of like sort of approach to talking about nature. Biophilic design is a nature-based and evidence-based way. That's my timer.